Was Moff Gideon working directly with the resurrected Palpatine on Exegol to get him the child? Find out after the drop. All right, welcome in, Padawans. Uh, today we got quite a juicy theory. Uh, gonna go over a ton of stuff, so we'll start right at the top, okay? And we'll just do an overview, so if you don't have 15 minutes to dig into this thing, we'll just give you the basics, all right? This is my Gideon Palpatine theory, all right? So the TLDR on this thing. Gideon is working directly with Palpatine on Exegol. He knows he survived, okay? And is being tasked with bringing the child to him for the research purposes of, of Palpatine trying to get a good clone to house his essence. All right. So that's that's the overall arching theme. All right. If you're going to stick with me, let's get in, dig deeper to it. All right. So we'll start. We're going to do a lot of background um, to kind of build this theory up from really the aftermath series of books. OK. And then some in the actual novelization of uh, The Rise of Skywalker. OK. So we're going to start in the aftermath books. That is kind of this setup of, of Palpatine actually knowing this plan the whole time, even as far back as the Clone Wars. OK. So we get a in-depth report from Gallius Rax in the Aftermath books about Palpatine's observatories and outposts as he was trying to find, you know, more stuff in the unknown regions, okay? We, he specifically states that Palpatine started looking past the known galaxy for dark side knowledge and set up ob ob observatories and outposts for research purposes even before the Galactic Republic fell. So this was during the Clone Wars. Some of these were more like laboratories, like prisons, where there were special apparatuses, harnessing life force of the beings trapped there. Um, kind of a side theory could even be the child was in one of these things, right? But we know he had all these outposts going further and further into the unknown regions because he was searching for this, this centralized power, this thing he felt, which I think we get to on, on the rise of Skywalker. I think we find out really is it ends up being Exegol, right? All right. So the conclusion from this is Palpatine ended up finding Exegol through these outposts and started to plan his essence transfer in the case of his death far before Endor, right? This was all set up. Um, I'm not saying every little detail because he even messed up some details in the Clone Wars, but that plan that he had to overthrow the Jedi and create the Empire, like this, his plan to resurrect himself in case it ever fell, this was all in the works the whole time, which is kind of crazy, right? So again, the conclusion, Palpatine ended up finding Exegol through these outposts, started to plan his essence transfer in the case of his death far before the Endor, um, bar, far before his death over the, the forest moon of Endor. This, along with the descriptions of the prisons, may be where his cloning research started um, from, you know, the, the Kaminoan uh, clone, clones that they were making for the Clone Wars as well. Uh, that combined with these prisons that he was harnessing life force. Maybe that's even where the origin of the child or, or he had the child in his possession early. And then when it, when it fell, the child got out. So continuing on here, Palpatine had Exegol and his essence transfer all planned out. All right, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that. It's made clear in the Rise of Skywalker novelization that he wasn't fully ready for the demise, his demise to come so soon. Um, he did specifically, so he, he, he didn't know that exactly he was going to die, right? But he told Rax, Rax, Gallius Rax, if you don't know the background, had the contingency plan to basically, if he ever were to die, to basically burn down the Empire and then head out to the out unknown regions and basically start the First Order, okay? So before the battle over the Forest Moon of Endor, he specifically sent Rax and the uh, Super Star Destroyer Ravenger to the Vulpinus ne Nebula before Endor um, to be ready to launch the contingency plan. Operation Center is what it turned out to be. Uh if he died in the case of his death, um, Palpatine told Rax that he felt a shatter point coming, which is interesting because that shatter point thing is kind of what Mace Windu was supposed to be able to do, too. So he saw kind of something in the force that he couldn't predict was going to happen and just wasn't sure what the outcome would be. So he sent Rax. So this kind of all was put into place. So basically what we know from this, all right, Palpatine had a general outline of what would happen to the Empire if he died all the way through kind of the first order and the final order, not that he had the names or anything, but he just had the basic framework of how the plan was going to work um, all, all in place, much again, much like his plan to overthrow the Republic in the prequels, right? So, I mean, a lot of, lot of planning here, right? Um, he knew all these steps, okay? It even says he wasn't completely ready. The body wasn't completely prepared. His research wasn't completely done to house that essence. That's why his kind of, you see in The Rise of Skywalker, his... The flesh is like melting off him, right? He was looking to do, he was looking to get it completed before he died. 
So the exact time, again, the exact timing of his death and everything like that wasn't perfectly planned. Did he, did he know, you know, in his notebook, had he written down the first order and the final order and the names of everything? Probably not. But the point is it was all planned. Uh, how it was all going to work if he did if he did to meet, meet his demise all right so here's where we get into the uh the rise of skywalker novelization a little bit more too um and this is kind of the background on why i think there were people um because this proves there were people who knew about palpatine's survival the exact details on how they knew if they knew exactly where he was all still kind of cloudy, right? But we knew, we know from the novelization, it made it pretty clear that Pride had knowledge of Palpatine's survival, um, and that the, this this final order was happening, even even while the First Order and most of the people in the First Order thought that was the plan. So, in the Rise of Skywalker novelization, there are two specific passages that outline, you know, Pride's knowledge of this. Um, definitely in a general sense, uh, like I had mentioned. Uh, that Palpatine had survived and the ultimate plan for the final order. Okay, you can find these on 177 and page 177 through 180. There's kind of a whole thing there. Um, the two that I wanted to, to pull out that kind of outline this very well are these two. He was, in a, he was in an area of his private quarters. No one had access to this place but even him. Uh, no one had access to this place but him. Even Supreme Leader, even Supreme Leader Wren didn't know it existed. It took effort and careful planning to erase all record of these transmissions, but the risk was worth it. And then, so I will say some people have speculated that this means he was just contacted by, or he reached out to Palpatine, uh, after Snoke died and, and basically after Palpatine announced he was back. Um, you could certainly read this this way. Um, I read it as there were a lot of transmissions and they were happening like even, even before, you know, Snoke died. Um, he's specifically re referencing Ren because at this point in the timeline, Su Supreme Leader Ren, you know, is is the Supreme Leader. So he's specifically re referencing Ren. But I will go to the next. There's a couple other quotes, but this next quote's the one that kind of sealed it for me. Is that he specifically says the Sith fleet was his life work, was his life's work, and hidden no more. So he knew that Palpatine was building this thing again. I don't want to get into specifics. I don't know specific like the exact thing. That pride no knew right he says the sith fleet was his life's work could that mean that he just knew that uh he just knew that palpatine was building this thing and it was you know when it came it came he didn't know it was called the final order he may not have known it was the sith fleet he just knew that he was doing his job in the first order but he knew there was something else and he was in contact with palpatine this whole time so what do we get from this basic conclusion is that palpatine made this grand plan of his survival uh, and the final order known to a select few people outside of Exegol. So that Exegol and the people there, the Sith cultists and stuff, weren't the only people knew that he survived, right? In the Aftermath series, you can even get into like Yup Tishu, one of his advisors. Um, and you could even argue that maybe the Acolytes of the Beyond were, uh, were sponsored almost by the Sith conglomerate that was on you know the the crazies that were on that you see in like the crowd when um ben and ray fight palpatine that they were even sponsored by them or or sent on the missions by them right so how Pal people knew of palpatine's survival um but specifically pride knew which makes me believe that other people could have known other high-ranking officials okay so here's kind of where we get to the mandalorian and how this relates to gideon Gideon and Dr. Pershing from Dr. Pershing from the Mandalorian. Okay, Dr. Pershing is the guy, the scientist at the at, in the, the early um, early bit of the season. Okay, that's working with the client. Um, he has a symbol on his jacket if you look closely, and it matches the the Kaminoan cloning facilities uh, symbol that you that we see in the in the Clone Wars. The other thing to note is that he is probably working directly with Gideon and is almost his advisor on this because when when the Mandalorian accepts the job and they talk about uh, the client says, you know, can you bring him in dead or alive or whatever? And Pershing kind of like, that's not our agreement. I need him. I need him alive to do the testing. So I think Pershing's actually working for Gideon, who's actually working for Palpatine, because they are trying to get the baby Yoda alive, the child alive, sorry, um, to get as much DNA and everything for Palpatine's research. All right. So what's the conclusion here? Palpatine's familiar, familiarity with the cloning process from Kamino, um, from Camino 
as well as his future failures um, in tro- in, in uh, the Rise of Skywalker, like we see uh, kind of all the clone bodies of Snoke and that his clone body isn't holding up, create a possible link between Pershing, Pershing Gideon, and their roles and interest in obtaining the child. All right, so that brings us to our final theory, okay? Basically, Moff Gideon's one of the few people that knew of Palpatine's survival and was working directly with him. He was tasked with bringing the child to Sheev that would help Palpatine's um, bid to find a, and build a suitable clone body for his essence to, to inhabit, right? And so that's, that's the interesting part of this. This is where we're going, is that I think we're going to see in Season 2 that Moff Gideon's whole purpose at least in the Mandalorian, from the Mandalorian season one and on. And, and his purpose and his reason for wanting the child is he is working directly with Palpatine and Palpatine is, is taking basically anything he can get and, and trying to find anything he can get in the universe to give him a suitable body for him to inhabit. I don't think he's trying to inhabit the child's body. I just think he wants to research it. That's, you know, the Kaminoan co- connection, the scientist, Dr. Pershing. That's where he comes in to play. Um... And the interesting thing is we know either it doesn't really spoil the Mandalorian if this is correct because he may or may not actually obtain the child, right? We know that they got some DNA or something. The Dr. Pershing got to test him a little before the Mandalorian rescued the child, right? So maybe that was all they get. Or maybe he does end up getting the child and sending him to Exegol and and that didn't help him either because we know by the time Rise of Skywalker comes around, Palpatine hasn't quite figured it out because he's, you know, he's the body's decaying basically, uh, and he and he needs he ends up needing the dyad between Ben and Ray to put himself back together. But purpose being, Moff Gideon is working directly with Palpatine, knows about Palpatine, and that's the specific reason he's going after the child. Would love to hear your comments um, and what you think is going on. Uh, if you think it's a valid theory or anything that I may have missed in canon that may point. Um, to further this uh, or add something to it or even knock it down. Love to hear your comments. Appreciate you hanging out. Later.